the process of discipleship. Then in John the 13th chapter, verses 13 to 14, you call me teacher and Lord, and you say, well, for so I am. If then your Lord and teacher have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. So teacher, of course, has to do with somebody who would instruct, who would teach. Uh, but master uh, is really interesting there in the Greek. It simply means somebody with supreme authority. So Jesus is saying for a disciple, he is a teacher and master. So a disciple is not only somebody who embraces Jesus as teacher. A disciple is also somebody who embraces Jesus as master. As you want to journey into being a disciple of Jesus, you've got to let Jesus be your teacher and your master, the one who is supreme in authority. Remember this, that you know Jesus said, uh, you cannot serve two masters. So if Jesus is your master, then he's also your only master. We need to be perfectly trained. And a disciple is perfectly, thoroughly trained, then they will be like their master. So what I want to do is try to capture for us uh, the training process that Jesus talked about in the Gospels. And I want to summarize this for us in these five statements. Number one, there is the training in his presence. Number two, there is the training of his word. Number three, there is a training of his spirit. Number four, there is training through fellowship. And number five, there is a training of the cross. So let's talk about these five things. Number one, training in his presence. In Mark chapter 3, verses 14 to 15, he, that is Jesus, he appointed 12 that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out demons. Their destination was, you've got to be like your teacher and master. But what was the first thing he wanted them to do? It says he appointed 12 that they might be with him. Go where I go. See me what, in what I'm seeing. Listen to everything I'm saying. And that is the first thing he brings into their lives in order to transform them as his disciples. And number two is a training of his word. This is what Jesus said in John chapter 8. You abide in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. Or you are truly my disciples. Abide. That word abide means to dwell. It means to settle down. And then he says, you will know the truth. You know, hearing the truth does not automatically imply you know the truth. Many of us hear the truth, but we never come to the place of knowing the truth. To know simply means to embrace and have a personal experience with the word. Third part of this training process is a training of his Holy Spirit. Uh, the Holy Spirit is another helper, the alos parakletos. Alos, the another meaning another of the same kind. He's another helper, just like Jesus. The Holy Spirit represents or brings all of Jesus to us, to all of his disciples around the world. And so the Holy Spirit is going to teach us, he's going to train us, he's going to lead us, he's going to guide us, and he is transforming us to become more and more like Jesus. Number four, training through fellowship. Jesus wants to get a message across to his disciples. He gets down. He picks a towel, a basin of water, and he washes the feet of his disciples. And then he tells them, look, I am your teacher, I am your master. As disciples, you're, you're, you're being transformed to becoming like me. But here's what I want you to do. I want you to wash one another's feet, just as I have washed your feet. Number five, the last one, is the training of the cross. Look what Jesus said. He said, if you want to be my disciple, you've got to hate your closest loved ones. Your father, your mother, your wife, your children, your own life. Gotta hate it if you want to be my disciple. Guys, you better count the cost before you make a decision to be my disciple. I mean, you sit down, think about it, make a deliberate choice if you want to be my disciple or not. Because I'm putting these three conditions or requirements before you. What are those three things here in this passage here? He says, number one, I want single-minded devotion. You gotta carry a cross daily, you gotta lay down everything. Journey if, if you want to follow him. He said, look, this is what it takes. I'm stating it clearly. I'm making it plain. You think about it. Count the cost. Then you decide if you want to be my 
disciple.